What pace should you aim at running your marathon? What pace should you aim at running your 5K or your 10K or your half marathon? I got a great question in the comments below and I'll try to talk you through my mentality when it comes to it attacking a pace and a distance and the way I look at it in order to give myself, and then you can take this, in order to give myself total freedom so I can relax on the day and just go for it. So it's a long question. But Mojed is essentially asking, with his recent running background, and he only started running 18 months ago, what is he capable of and what should he be aiming for the marathon, which he's going to run in about 12 weeks' time? So just the summary points. Great question, Mojed. So a quick summary. You've been running for almost 18 months. Your first half marathon was in April this year, 2024, 1 hour 29, and that was conservative pacing in his words. Since then, his 5Ks in 1822 and then 1752, 30 seconds quicker, which is more recently, and that's a huge jump. His VO2 max has been tested in a lab to be 58, which is high. He's got a sports background in weightlifting. I mentioned something as well, that he had a coach at the moment, but he'd use me in the future, so I was just joking there. But off that glance, and I don't have the full picture, you have to look under the bonnet, deep under the bonnet, so we can put you in the right place and figure out where you're at at the moment. Off that glance, into your rapid progress over the last year and a half, I'd say if you've built the endurance just as well as you have the speed, then the 259 that he's aiming for, just to dip under that sub three, would be conservative. And although I'd never go off watch predictions, because again, they can't take the whole view. You can have two different runners wearing the same watch with the same running prediction, the same race prediction, and one guy after the running session could go and drink 10 beers. And the other guy could go and have the perfect recovery meal, the perfect smoothie, uh, the perfect sleep. The other guy is not having great sleep. It would give you the same prediction for your race. So it's only an idea. It's only, a, it's only an estimate and that's how you have to take it. So I'd never go off the watch predictions. They don't have the full story. But it's likely that if you close this next 12, 13 weeks properly and taper well, you should be aiming at for, for below 250. I'd ask myself these questions. What would you be happy with? What would you be ecstatic with? And why are you aiming for sub three? That would be my big questions. If it's to join that club of sub three, for me, you're already in that club with your 5K times. It already is way more impressive to run 17.52 for, for 5K than run a sub three. I promise you that. And then he responded, thanks a lot for answering, mate. I guess I know that I have the determination and grit. I've been doing the mileage, but started to doubt myself, but it's more than 12 weeks out. It's gonna be my first marathon after all, and I can comfortably run 28 to 32K at relatively easy pace with some faster splits. I guess the marathon is just a beast in itself. So I wonder, how do, you con how do you confirm if you have the endurance base? So I asked him again, what do those 28 to 32K runs look like? Are they always long, slow distance, or are they specifically paced? Up to now, they've been 4.45 to 5.25 pace, but over the next 12 weeks, the long runs will be more race specific with faster blocks. Now, this is all good. He's in a great place, 12, 13 weeks out. He's got a marathon. He's definitely hitting the speed box. He seems to be doing the endurance as well, 28 to 32K already with 12 weeks out. He's in a good place. But something that he said really kind of stuck with me. And so I wanted to give him, and then you guys, this piece of advice. I guess the marathon is a beast in itself. And for me, Yes, you should respect the marathon distance. If you go off too fast, you're gonna know about it at 30K, 33K, and remember those distances. You've gotta respect the distance, but at the same time, it shouldn't be daunting for you. It's just another distance. If you, for me, if you can run 5K, you can run 10K. If you can run 10K, you can run a half marathon. And if you can run a half marathon, you can run a marathon. It's mainly mentality, training, and nutrition on the day leading up to, or the two days leading up to, and during the race. If you have the mentality and the nutrition together with a half marathon behind you, you could run a marathon. And to say that you can, because you've not done the training, you would be able to complete the marathon. It would be a case of nutrition. There's a lot of runners that I know that their longest run is 25K, and they'll do many of them, 
sort of six to eight of them in a marathon buildup, but they'll all be specifically paced. And the idea and thinking behind that is that it's more important to do the quality than the distance. And then when they're there on, on the start line of a marathon, and these are all sub 220 guys, then they will be ready and fresh to run and they're used to running the pace, which is as important as more important than in building the endurance and stamina to run long periods of time. In exactly the same way that a lot of people will say, oh my God, you run 100K on the flat, at like six and a half hours, six hours, 40 minutes. How did you possibly train for that? It was no different or very, very, very similar to running a marathon and training for a marathon. Your long run might go a little bit more. My long runs went a little bit more. I went from, I went up to 50K. And so I did two, three, four of those, and then I was good to go. And a lot of those runs, a lot of those 50K runs, were literally sort of warming 4K up for a marathon, and then afterwards doing another 4K. So I had the marathon and all the, the drinks, etc., there for me. Great way to build your long runs, a great way to build your, have fun running your long runs and have that race simulation. What are you actually doing on race morning? Waking up early, having the right breakfast, getting your nutrition in place, and also having a table of drinks there that you can collect along the way. A lot easier than doing it out there on your own, but there's a mental game, and a great part of your, your psychology that gets built as you're out there on your own, clocking up the miles, doing a long run, fantastic. And the final thing that I'd say is, when I'm in Spain or Italy or wherever I'm racing and they're working in kilometers, everyone starts to find it really tough at 30 kilometers. If I'm racing in miles and I'm in America or the UK, everybody starts to find it tough at 20 miles, which is 33K. So why, if you're running in miles, would, it get, would everybody start to find it tough three kilometers more, literally 10% more? It's because psychologically, they hit that round number of 20 miles or 30K, and now it's starting to get hard. So if you're running in miles, and you're thinking in miles per hour, then it's easier to get to 20 miles and just have six, six miles left than to get to 30 kilometers and have 12 kilometers left psychologically. If you take that out of the window and just say, the distance is the distance, I'm here to enjoy it, and I've done the training, I'm in a good place, I've done a lot of work at the pace that I'm intending to run, and faster, which he clearly is doing from his 5K times, and building up to this, a great place right now, 12, 13 weeks to go, to build that specific marathon pace, what he wants to run, I would, get him, I would be getting him to run 245, 250, and he's more than capable of that as well. It would be daunting because you're thinking, it's my first marathon, I don't want to mess it up. I want to go out there and, and run that sub three hours. Not important, it's really not important. And although it's checking the box and you might be able to tell your work colleagues or your friends that you are a sub three hour marathon runner, nobody cares. And so it's so much more impressive that you're getting the most out of your body, physically, physiologically, and mentally. So yeah, good luck with that. I hope I answered your question and thanks a lot for, thanks a lot for writing that much, that much detail about something that matters so much to you.